Hey everybody, Dave Aldrich here. Um, some people have asked me about my astrophotography uh, gear, my setup, so here's a little video showing you guys what it's all about. So I'll just walk you through the components. Uh, the main system is the uh, equatorial mount. And this is what holds the camera and or the telescope, if you got a telescope. And this is what moves to an object and then uh, moves the camera to keep the object in the frame. Uh, I can kind of unlock the, the clutches and just kind of show you how it moves. So this evening I'll be shooting off in this direction so the telescope will be you know moving like this through the uh, throughout the night uh, this mount is made by Celestron uh, this is the C gem mount It's a popular uh, popular mount for this uh, application um, it's kind of a mid-range telescope uh, equatorial mount uh, moving on up uh, this is my camera. This is the uh, Canon 60D, which is definitely not the best camera for uh, astro imaging, but it does a pretty good job, and I kind of like the idea of, um, you know, using a camera that's, like, seeing what's possible with a, with a consumer-available camera without, you know, having really expensive, expensive specialty gear. So that's what that is. And then for the lens... Uh, I'm using my Canon 70 to 200 f 2.8 telephoto lens uh, with a 2x extender, so I get effectively 400 millimeters. And um, it's certainly not as long a focal range as some telescopes, but uh, uh, the deep sky objects that I'm imaging are, are really large in the sky, so you don't really need a lot of focal range. And also, the shorter the focal range, the easier it is to get steady long exposures. Uh, next to it, I have mounted is my um, Orion Starshoot Auto Guider and Mini Guide Scope. So this is what does the guiding. So this camera here is a little webcam. This camera will look at a star and will track it. And will uh, the software runs on my laptop that looks for a very small movement in that star. And if it sees it starts to drift, it sends data to the telescope mount to... Um, tell the motors to adjust speed up or slow down so that the uh, the star is staying right where it should um, and uh, when it works right uh, you can get eight uh, I was doing like eight minute exposures last night and doing uh, doing pretty well so um, and then uh, the next thing up here we've got are just um, this is kind of just a ghetto rig of some old socks wrapped around the lenses and what I do is put a, uh, a hand warmer like this and we just kind of stick that underneath here. And the reason for that is to keep the lens elements at least a little bit warmer than ambient temperature. And that will keep uh, mist or dew or frost, even when it's really cold, from forming on the front lens elements. Because uh, as soon as it, as soon as it, you get moisture on the element, then your, your pictures are ruined. Um, uh, then the whole thing is mounted together on kind of a, a concoction of uh, defocus parts that I put together um, our camera derails base plate on uh, some rods lens mount on uh, some other gadgets that I could show in more detail uh, to keep the whole thing mounted nice and secure um, and everything goes into my laptop um, the laptop it runs software that pulls the images off the camera and it also runs the software to do the guiding and then um, to power it, I've got a couple of these lithium batteries, which are pretty big, give me a nice run time. Uh, the main problem I was running into with these is that lithium batteries really don't like being cold. And when it gets too cold up here at night, they lose their capacity. So again, just stuffing hand warmers in there to keep them warm and kind of keep them tucked away in a bag so they're a little insulated. Uh, that seemed to work really well last night. 
And uh, so we'll try again tonight, try to get some more pictures. All right, that's about it.